Hello, Jose Vega here, your federal court certified interpreter. Uh, today, I wanted to show you some interpreting equipment. Uh, you can see this headset. This is the transmitter over here. And you may be wondering, okay, when do interpreters use this? Because uh, you may have been to depositions, uh, hearings, and, and you may not have seen an interpreter use these uh, yet, or, and, and, or maybe you saw someone use it at a, at a hearing, and then you uh, scheduled the deposition and you thought they were gonna use this at the deposition as well. Well, uh, these we use usually in, uh, when we have to interpret simultaneously. So in a courtroom, whenever the person is not testifying, uh, I would use one of these uh, mediations as well for the openings. So uh, in an opening of a, of a mediation, they come in very handy. Um, you could also use them in the caucuses of a mediation as well. So when the mediator comes in and is talking uh, with you, with the attorney, uh, the interpreter can just uh, interpret simultaneously and understand and be more actively involved. Uh, a lot of attorneys uh, like that. Now, in a courtroom setting, it comes very handy because look at this. These are the receivers. This is one receiver. Uh, the person puts this over the ear, this, like so, and it has multiple channels to avoid any interference. And we can have, we can pass out as many as the of these as, as you want. Um, we'll pass out five of these free of charge. Uh, so you can have, uh, if you have multiple uh, clients of yours um, that need an interpreter, uh, we, we can have uh, several of them with these headsets on and they can be listening throughout. Uh, you may have a, a, a relative that wants to listen into the proceedings. Uh, the relative is not a witness. You're not gonna call them as a, uh, as a witness. So the, the rule is not invoked. Uh, so you can you can give this uh, to them and they can listen along. Um, it comes in very very handy. Uh, it's uh, it's not disruptive to the proceedings, so the interpreter can have this and be interpreting further away, a little bit further back. Does it need to be right next to you in the plaintiff's or uh, defendant's um, uh, table? So you don't need to hear the interpreter that loudly in your ear bothering you for what your next question is gonna be because you're hearing this interpreter's voice constantly in the background. Um, you're still gonna hear, hear the interpreter to, to say the truth. Um, it, it is just something that happens. Uh, and in a future video, I'll show you a, another device that I have to muffle the voice. Uh, but well, this is the simultaneous interpreting equipment. It works with radio frequencies. We get into all the courthouses with this. Uh, federal courts, you can go in with these as well. If you have your, your federal court ID, which, which uh, I do. Um, so, uh, and the federal court, they usually have uh, infrared equipment and we can talk about that in a different video. Well, uh, just let me know if you need one of these for any interpreting assignment, uh, we'll take it with us. We can use these in mediations. We can use them in hearings. Uh, we cannot use them in depositions. We cannot use this equipment in depositions. You may, you may use it, but most attorneys like to hear the Spanish translation as well. So when you're using this, you're interpreting simultaneously. So if you're asking a question, I'm going to be interpreting, or one of my interpreters is going to be interpreting simultaneously, you will not be able to hear the translation, right? So if the interpreter made a mistake, or maybe just missed one word that was very important for you and, and you speak Spanish, uh, you want to be able to hear that, that question just to check on the interpreter. And, uh, but uh, also the court reporters, uh, if, if they hear the voice of the interpreter simultaneously, most of them, they do not like that. They cannot write because they hear two voices at the same time and it gets very confusing for them. Uh, to type uh, on, on, the, on the steno machine when they're hearing two voices. So that depositions are 99.9% .9 of the time. I've heard some stories of interpreters using these for depositions, but 99.9% .9 of the time, 
depositions, examinations under oath, uh, recorded statements, they're always done consecutively. You cannot use this for consecutive interpreting, only for simultaneous interpreting. Well, if you like this video, like and subscribe. Visit us at legaltranslations.net forward slash blog and subscribe to the blog. Thank you.